how things change and you don't notice until one day you notice them like aging? <laughs> Am I right? You don't realize you age and then one day you look and go, ah! <laughs> right? Am I right? I'm absolutely right about that. Not that I've aged, but I, I saw the commercial with Diane Keaton and she did. But I have. But she did. In that same vein, you, we use that um, um, idea that we are shifting from the Piscean to the Aquarian age that was, brought, that we, what was referred to this morning. One of the characteristics uh, that defines the difference between these two astrological ages is the difference between what's called Kronos, the time on your watch, and Kairos, the timeless nature fairy tales. Once upon a time, timelessness, dream time, okay? Psychic time, intuitive time. You, the time that says, I, I, when you pick up the phone, I was just talking about you. I was just thinking about you. The communication that goes on between here and there and here and there and here and there. Okay? The timeless world you also live in. That is the world that you are now honing, that you're developing, that you are expanding in conferences like this. Expanding your consciousness, expanding your consciousness, developing a language for the world behind your eye that's working in partnership with the world in front of your eye so that you can go this way interiorly and exteriorly simultaneously. Whereas before, we built our world scaffolding the world externally with only the world of the mind as the real world, the heart was the hysterical world for the female. But the mind was the world with respectability. Now we're going into the world of the intuitive, oh, and then, and then of course, the intuition was the world of the cycle of the moon and menstruation and lunacy and the forest, etc. Now we're developing these, these inter the interior life, thinking that we can contain it. Thinking that, we, but it snuck up on us, ladies and gentlemen. It is containing us. It has, in fact, enveloped us. But now, given communication and the size of the womb, everything that we know, everything that happens on the womb, and in the womb, and to whom on the womb, in my neighborhood, in my people I know, a rock is something on the ground. Here's a rock. Do you have a rock? I have rocks. I have a rock garden. Now, no matter what happens on the world, in the world, with the world, and to the world, we know it within seconds. Now, I want to pause here and tell you that you have been engaged in a mystical process for I don't know how many years, at least longer than a year, by virtue of the fact that you've asked yourself, for what reason have I been born? That's a mystic's question, which means you have opened your soul. By opening your soul, you have said, let me feel God, the greater whole. Let me take it unto myself. Let me empty it into my heart. Let me pray for those who do not pray for themselves. Let me please God, enter into your sacred heart, the heart of the sacred. You don't realize that that is part of the prayer. That goes with saying, for what reason have I been born? Do you think that's an occupation? Oh, let me see the nicer occupation and make sure that everyone admires it. Will you do that? No, 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 no. One of the soul's, the deepest, the soul's knowledge, no matter what type of chaos we enter into, and we've entered into a period of chaos, very much so because we have too much history, like the, like the illness in an individual. We have too much history that is burdening us as we need to create the next era of health. We just have too much history. 
and it needs to be shed, and it's all nations, not just ours, but the, the, all nations have too much crusty history and too many crusty wounds, and they can't progress with that. If we're all going to survive, 